All right, so in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I wash my R36 Passat. And as you can imagine, by being a black car, I take every step of precaution I can to make sure I don't introduce any scratches or swirls into the paint. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you the best possible way to go about doing that. So stick around if you're interested. So quickly, before we get started with actually washing the car, let's quickly go through the products that we're going to be using. So on the left here, we have a Bowden's own wheel cleaner called the Wheelie Clean. Uh, any sort of iron particle breaking down sort of wheel wash will work perfectly fine. I use the Bowden's one because I live in Australia and it's easily accessible. But anything that does break down the iron particles and turns the wheel that ready sort of purple color, that works perfectly fine. So next to that, we have the buckets. Now, contrary to popular belief, a lot of people in the detailing community will want you to believe that you need really big buckets and they need to be filled with hot soapy water. That's just not the case at all. Two smallish buckets like this will work fine. You want one bucket to be full of soapy water and the other bucket just to be full of clean water with nothing in it. That's the bucket that will have the grit guard in it. And the idea is you dip your wash mitt in the bucket with the soap. You then wash the car once it's dirty. You rinse it off in the clean bucket without the soap and then you just stick it back in the bucket with the soap and start over and repeat that process. So two small buckets like this work perfectly fine. Just make sure you implement the grit guard and trust me, this is enough for any sort of medium to large size sedan, just like what I'm working on in today's video. Next to that is a pressure washer. A pressure washer is a really, really helpful tool when it comes to washing a car because it enables you to not only blast off the sort of foam and the debris that's on the car, but it also allows you to do stuff with a foam cannon, which is very, very seen all over the internet. I'm sure you've seen videos on Facebook of people washing high luxury, expensive cars with them, and they just look sick, and they do serve a very good purpose, and we'll touch on that later in the video. So I've also got a pressure washer and the foam cannon. Next to that are all of my microfiber towels. Whenever you are touching the paint on the car, you want to be making sure you are using microfiber towels. Try not to touch the car with anything else because you are likely to scratch the paint. Sponges, scrubbing brushes, anything like that aren't to touch the paint. They are the most likely things to cause scratches. So make sure you have a very large selection of microfiber towels. I'll explain throughout the video as I'm using each particular one, what I use each particular one for and what its purpose is but make sure you have a lot of microfiber towels at your disposal. And next to that is dish soap and everyone will tell you not to wash your car with dish soap and I am exactly the same. However, in a situation like today, dish soap, what that does is it degreases the paint and it breaks down anything that's on it. It'll remove any sort of polishing, waxing, any sort of coating off the paint and strip it right back down to the clear coat. So. We're going to be using uh, dish soap in today's video because we want to remove any sort of road grime and oils from the paint. We also want to remove any waxes that are could be still on the paint, although I highly doubt there are any left on there because we're going to be reapplying a polish at the end of this video. So next to that is, of course, just a regular car wash. This is what I would recommend you use if you're doing a maintenance wash any other day of the week where your car hasn't been experiencing really wet weather for the last three months like mine has. This is the sort of car wash I would recommend you use. And of course, the links to anything I've mentioned in today's video will be in the video description for you to go and check out. They are affiliate links. They do help the channel out a lot. So I'd appreciate if you shopped with the links down below. With that being said though, let's get started with the actual car wash. So now we're actually gonna wash the car. The first thing you wanna do though is make sure you've got all your products set up. You wanna make sure the pressure washer is plugged in. You wanna make sure you've got running water. You wanna make sure it works. You wanna fill your buckets up with water and soap. Fill the foam cannon up with soap because there's nothing like getting started and realizing you haven't set something up. Trust me, I do it all the time and it is a major pain. So make sure you set everything up as well as that, make sure you rip any tags off any microfibers as they are likely to scratch the paint. So when I begin washing the car, the first thing I do is the wheels. So I grab my Bowden's wheelie clean and I spray it liberally on the front two wheels uh, because they get the dirtiest. We can see in my case, the wheels have actually previously been rotated in the last few days as my car just got serviced. So the major brake dust is actually on the back right now. So I spray, I spray a liberal amount onto those wheels to help break down that brake dust. By the time I've done a full circle of the car though, the first wheel I sprayed is ready to be pressure washed off. Although before I do that, I like to use this wheel brush right here just to quickly agitate it. It helps 
to decrease the likelihood of any sort of debris being left on the wheel. So that is my cleaning for the wheels. It's time to move on to the body of the car. So we're going to start with a quick pre-soak. We're going to spray it down with the pressure washer, try and remove any sort of debris that's loosely sitting on the surface. Then we're going to move on to our foam cannon, which will be loaded with dish soap. We're going to spray that liberally all over the surface of the car and let that dwell. Whilst that's dwelling, we want to make sure that the car isn't in the sun. We want to make sure that it is a nice shaded area. This will reduce the chances of the dish soap or any sort of water drying on the surface of the car and leaving water spots. So once our car has dwelled for a few minutes, it's time to rinse the car off and begin our touch wash, knowing that we've now taken every precaution we can to try and minimize the amount of dirt and substances that are left on the paint surface. So we're going to hit it again with the foam cannon. I know some people don't do this. I like to do it. It just increases the amount of lubricity on the paint, which further reduces the likelihood of scratches. The whole idea here is we don't want to introduce any scratches, so we're going to take any step we can to not do that. Once we've sprayed down the foam onto the car, we're going to grab our microfiber wash mitt. I like these sort of wash mitts because they have lots of really, really long, deep microfibers that really help to capture all of the dirt off the car and they sort of tuck it in to the microfiber and keep it away from the paint surface which again uh, reduces the chances of scratching the paint. So what we're going to do is we're going to do that all the way around the car starting from the top making sure we don't miss any spots. We're going to be doing this in straight lines of motion. We don't want to be doing circles. The circles are visible. If you are to introduce a scratch, circles are visible from more directions than straight lines by themselves are. So we want to make sure we are doing straight lines on the car as well as that. We want to make sure that we're not focusing and pushing too hard on any particular areas. We want to make sure we're not missing any bits and we want to work from the roof of the car all the way down. As we get towards the bottom, we want to make sure we are washing and rinsing our microfiber pad more often as as we get lower the amount of dirt increases substantially which again increases the likelihood of scratches so throughout the whole wash we want to make sure we're washing our mitts our mitt the most towards the end of the wash as we get down to the bottom of the car so once we've completed our touch wash and every surface area of the car has now been touched and washed what we want to do is rinse the car off, make sure we can get every last bit of soap we possibly can off the surface of the car. And by now, this car is looking absolutely spotless. Now, what we're going to do is dry the car off with an absorbent microfiber towel. We want to make sure that we're using a microfiber towel as if there is any dirt left on the surface of the car. It'll be picked up by the microfiber instead of being dragged around the car like it would be with a chamois. We want to make sure we are washing the car off though. I know a lot of people don't actually dry their cars. We want to make sure they are dried correctly as it decreases the likelihood of water spots being left on the paint. Once that's done, the car is basically spotless. I like to move on to applying a tire dresser. I use these cheap little applicator pads that I bought on eBay. I think I paid $4 for a 10 pack. They're very, very cheap. I just apply some sort of gel. Uh, I highly recommend you use gels and an applicator like this rather than a spray. It's much easier to control the thickness of it and decreases the likelihood of getting it where you don't want it. So I'd highly recommend an applicator like this and a gel. Once that's done though, the car will be looking near perfect. Then what I'm going to be doing is applying a quick polish. Now this polish that I'm using from Autoglime uh, actually doesn't really have any abrasives in it from what I have read. This is more of a filler polish and I'll make a dedicated video to that. Basically know that instead of doing what a generic polish would do and removing a very slight amount of the clear coat on the car to reduce the amount of scratches, the intention of this sort of polish is to instead of removing the paint around the scratch to make it look level, it's the idea is to fill the scratch in. So I'm going to be using that. I'm going to applicate it to a microfiber applicating pad. I'm just going to work around the entire car surface right now whilst the car is clean. And then once that's done, we are going to stand back and admire our work as the car will be looking absolutely perfect. And one last quick thing I like to do before I finish up is add some rain -X to the windows. This just enables the water to sort of bead off just like a freshly waxed car does. It helps keep the windows really clean when it's raining and it makes the windows clean. I mean, it's just one little step that I like to add right at the end just to help 
keep the car better protected and looking better for longer. All right, and there we have it. The car wash is completely done. This car is looking absolutely spotless. It looks incredible. I seriously cannot wait to take this thing out tomorrow and snap some really nice photos for Instagram. One last thing I will tell you is don't forget to tip out the foam cannon and give it a quick rinse out. We don't want any foam or soap building up on the inside of that. We also just want to stick our microfibers in the washing machine together. Do it at a mildly warm wash and make sure you use a wash that doesn't have any fabric softeners in it. With that being said though, I'll make some more dedicated videos later down the road in which I will walk you through perhaps washing the wheel wells detailing the interior, polishing the car with the dual action polisher, and etc, etc. With that being said though, if you've learned anything or have enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to my channel down below because I'll be doing more videos like this. Like the video if you did learn something. And with that being said, I will catch you in the next one. I hope you enjoyed the video.